let's talk about April Fools. You know, some people think it's really cute, really, really, really cute to pull pranks on others. Something I gotta tell you is when a bunch of older women are together, we don't pull pranks. We do not pull pranks on any level. But we forgot to tell my daughter this. So one day, on April Fool's Day, there are four of us older ladies that all get together for each other's birthday. And we were there, we had just finished cake, we were doing green tea, having a wonderful time, exchanging birthday cards, exchanging love for each other in a wonderful world that it was, and my daughter calls. Hi baby, what's going on? She says, Mama, guess what? Oh my God, I just caused a wreck and I let my insurance lapse. And my other friend says, my face went white. I went like this. I was shocked. I didn't know what to do. Oh my God, jail time. Uh, we were all thinking, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do to get our daughter? She's a collective daughter of all of us, right? What can we do to get her out of the situation? Oh my God, oh my God, oh God. Okay, how much money can we put together if she needs to be bailed out of jail? How? What can we do? What can we do? So anyway, then... All the time we're discussing while I'm on the cell phone with this little weasel, she starts laughing. She goes, April Fools! And every one of us went, huh, you're kidding. Each of us have vowed, of course, that whenever she's in town and we can all get together, she's going to get a, a whooping. But we also know that when you open up a can of whoop ass, you open it away from you, so it doesn't actually get all over you as well. This kid is still laughing about it. We four ladies are still lying in wait for a spanking party. Kid's going to get it. Kid's going to get it big time. Sheesh. Oh, then I went up a couple weeks ago and helped her move. Because all the time that she's ever, ever moved, she's not cleaned her way out of an apartment. And usually, since we have a background, I have a background, and cleaning course you can't look at my house and understand that I even comprehend what cleaning means or organizational skills or anything like that. I have storage in my living room where I would love to have had a couch and maybe some bookcases and be able to watch TV and stuff like that. Instead I have this production studio on one side of my house and on the other side I have my art studio. So I have a nice bedroom, lovely bedroom, wonderful kitchen, excellent bathroom and a spare room that houses my clothes folded up on the bed. But anyway, I don't get that much, you know, company over that's going to sleep in that bed anyway. So, where was I? Oh, I was cleaning. I promised her that I would come up and help her clean out of her apartment. But she needed to have all of her stuff done. So the girl has a huge fan club. So she gets all these big, huge, muscly, burly, hunky, hunky guys. She packs it all. They carry it to her new place, right? So I get there on um, like a Tuesday night thinking, God, we got to get all this stuff boxed. Ugh, I don't want to do it. I pull up to her house, her old place. She says, Mom, come to the old place. We got pizza. Hmm, food. Hmm. I'm there. So we get to her. I get to her house. And here are all these kids sitting on a mattress set in the yard and outside the apartments, right? And I'm going, is this your bed? And Nellie says, no. And uh, I said, good, because it's going to be really damp with all the humidity and all this other kind of stuff. So anyway, I sat down and ate some pizza with him. I said, you know, I'm really tired. We need to get, I worked all day. I drove, you know, three hours to get here. So what do we have to do in the, in the apartment to get moved out? Now, all the time I was working, I drive a van that, or set of vans that have really stiff, accelerator pedal so my right leg was killing me so we hiked upstairs to her old apartment I'm going oh my god I'm gonna die this is my bad leg uh. so I was doing a whole lot of mom whining because I can it's it's my gift to her anyway we went up there and I looked and everything had been moved out and I went oh my gosh it's everything's gone so all we have to do is clean and I said, do you want to start tonight? She goes, oh, no. Let's just go to the new place and we'll zonk out. So I got to spend her first night in her new place. We got to spend it together. And uh, so anyway, um, what she likes to do is she has really, really long hair. 
and she takes it like this in the mornings and throws it on the bathroom wall, right? So I get up the next morning and take a shower. Now, one thing we forgot to bring over were towels. So I am a larger, more Rubenesque, statuesque kind of woman. I had three hand towels, this big, three of them, to dry off with, okay? So I'm sitting there going, you know, there's parts of me that I'll never reach with this. Oh well, air dry. So we finished that up, we went to breakfast, we went and we bought, um, I like to use dish crystals, the cheapest ones you can find, because when you pour them in a tub, swish them around a little bit, it takes all of the body stuff off the tub. So, uh, but, at, but before that, I got into the shower, right? And I, my arm touches all this hair and I'm going, oh my god! All this hair. I thought I left this behind when you were like a teenager and we showered together, right? She goes, ooh, don't touch it. Don't touch it without a Kleenex. I says, is, is it dirty hair? She goes, no, it just feels uck. <laughs> She's such a goop. Anyway, so we got all the cleaning stuff. And I started in her roommate's um, uh, bathroom that had never been cleaned in the year that she they lived there, I'm guessing. So anyway, I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed, wore out fast. Then we had to go to a... Um, a couple of volleyball games and then we came back later on that night at 9.30 and got out of there at 1 o'clock in the morning. But anyway, I was showing the roommate who is a tiny little girl who likes to move in heels, carrying all these boxes and everything in these little little heels and I'm going, you got no tennis shoes? Did your mother not tell you about tennis shoes? <laughs> anyway, so she was taking uh, uh, lessons on how to clean, right? So then we get to the uh, get all the way out there to the um, kitchen, and they had allowed something to, you know, overflow in the in the uh, oven. And man, I was scraping and I was putting the, you know, the uh, easy off everything in there. And finally, 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 I got it all out of there. So I told the girls, I, I asked the girls, I said, so what have you learned from this, this experience? You know, especially with the oven. And they both said in unison, don't cook. And for them, it'll work. <laughs> In the meantime, for you all, line your crap with, with foil so you don't have to, like, get in there and scrub it. <laughs> oh, man, they were so cute. They learned a lot. Maybe they learned a lot. They could have learned a lot. I don't think they learned anything. We'll see. Time will tell.